Hi, in this video we're going to start problems in the next section of Bergman's book, section 2.2. We're looking at problem 2.2.5s, which means it's an old exam problem. We'll be finding an accumulated value of an annuity due. We've been talking about annuity dues in recent videos. When interest is credited now, though, over a different time interval than the payments, or in this case, deposits, are going to be. The problem wants us to find the accumulated value. I think I'm also going to find the equivalent effective annual interest rate. So I'm going to do something else extra here that you don't see in this problem. Catherine deposits 100 annuit in account at the beginning of each four-year period for 40 years. So over 40 years, she's starting at time zero with a deposit, doing it at the beginning of each four-year period. Evidently, that means the last deposit will be 36 years from the starting deposit. And we're going to be finding, ultimately, the accumulated value at the end of 40 years. This is going to be an annuity due. We're going to be finding the future or accumulated value of an annuity due. The account credits interest at an effective annual interest rate of I, but notice that's an annual interest rate, whereas her deposits are every four years. So we have these differing intervals. Um, the amount at the end of 40 years is five times the amount at the end of 20 years. Calculate X, and let me add my extra thing in here as well. Also, calculate I, even though that's not part of the original question, I think it's of interest here because these are differing intervals. Here's our timeline. Time zero. Let's only mark four-year intervals. Here's four, here's eight, here's 12, etc. 36 years after year zero, after time zero, will be her last payment. Then the accumulated or future value is going to be found at time 40, that is going to be x. So there's a 100 deposit here at time 0, a 100 deposit here at time 4, etc. The last deposit, which will be the 10th deposit, is at time 36. Let's let, um, let j equal the effective 4-year interest rate. Effective four-year interest rate. It's valid then over four-year periods, whereas I is valid only over one-year periods. How are they related? Well, the simplest thing to write down would be that one plus I to the four, fourth power, would equal one plus J. This is supposed to be an I here. 1 plus i to the fourth power equals 1 plus j. So j is 1 plus i to the fourth minus 1. You also could solve for i. You could take the fourth root of both sides. 1 plus i will be the fourth root of 1 plus j, 1 plus j to the 1 fourth power. So i will be 1 plus j to the 1 fourth power minus 1. Those are the re relationships between i and j. All right, uh, x is the accumulated amount after 40 years, at the end of 40 years, at time 40, of this annuity that's pay, that's 100 deposits. The amount is 100. There are, there are 10 deposits total. It's evaluated four years, one period for j after the last deposit. So it's an annuity due, s double dot, 10 payments, with interest rate j. That equals five times the accumulated amount at the end of 20 years. This equals five times the value at time 20 of the first five payments starting at time zero and going through time 16. Five times 100 s double dot five payments at interest rate j. The 100s can cancel. Let's write the formulas for the S double dots, and we can write it in terms of the discount rate, D. Uh, this will be 1 plus J to the 10th minus 1 over D. And this will be 5 times 
1 plus j to the fifth minus 1 over d. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and we can divide both sides by uh, this thing. And this thing is the difference of two squares. We've talked about these kinds of algebraic things in previous videos. We can factor the difference of two squares. 1 plus j to the 10th minus 1 can factor as 1 plus j to the 5th minus 1, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> times 1 plus j to the 5th plus 1 over, again the d's cancel, so we get over 1 plus j to the 5th minus 1, and this will equal 5. The 1 plus j's to the 5th minus 1 will cancel. So we're left with 1 plus j to the plus to the fifth plus 1 equals 5, or 1 plus j to the fifth equals 4. All right. Um, again, the goal is to calculate x. Um, we can use uh, either of these expressions to calculate x. It doesn't matter which one. Since we have 1 plus j to the fifth, and we'll need that for this thing here, it's probably easiest to use this expression to calculate x. I am going to need to calculate d if I need to use this formula here. d is the discount rate. I'm picking it to be the four-year discount rate. It equals j over 1 plus j. That's an equation we've seen before. If you forgot that, you could derive it as, more simply, you might remember it's 1 minus v, where v would be the four-year discount factor, where v in this case would be 1 over 1 plus j, and then you could subtract those fractions and do appropriate cancellation to get this formula for the discount rate. Um, what is j? Take this equation to solve for j. Take the fifth root of both sides, raise both sides to the 0.2 power, and then subtract 1. 4 to the 0.2 power, 1 fifth power, minus 1, j is 0 0.31950791, and then d is going to be j divided by 1 plus j. Let's go ahead and store this in register 0, that's what I just did. Add 1 to that. That's 1 plus j. I've got to divide j by that. Let's take the reciprocal of this and multiply it by what I stored in register 0 times call 0. Looks like d is 0 0.242. 0 0.242. I will need that. I will now go back up here essentially take this thing and multiply it times 100 to get the answer to the question. So again, this is d. Let me store that now in register 0. So d is now in register 0. Calculate 1 plus j to the fifth. Well, we already have 1 plus j to the fifth. It's 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. I want to do 3 divided by d. Actually, I guess I didn't need to store that. I'll take, take the reciprocal of this times 3 times 5, then times 100, so times 500. There is the answer to the question. 6194.72, that is the value of x. Now let me do my extra thing. Let's also calculate i. I can do that from this equation right here. Take 1 plus j to the 1 fourth and subtract 1. j again was 0 0.31950791. 1 1.31950791 needs to be raised to the 1 fourth power, 0.25 power, subtract 1. Again, using this equation here to get i, 
and I is about 0 0.07177. That's the equivalent effective annual interest rate. It was not asked for, but I decided to put it in there to make it seem more relevant in terms of the fact that the uh, interest rate is being compounded at different intervals than the uh, deposits are, are being done at.